On October 21st, Nanette and I made our way back up to Binghamton to get back to work. When we got there, Doug Goodrich told us they received a complete sling high wing delivered in a container fresh from the factory. Naturally, we had to take a look. And sure enough, the interior didn't disappoint. Spacious, roomy, downright comfortable. But let's not kid ourselves. We didn't come here to oogle at someone else's airplane. No, sir. We came here to work. So we got to it. But before we go any further, I owe you an apology because I was delayed. It's been a little while since our last video. Nanette retired in June as a math teacher, and she had her first September off since, well, she was four years old. And she planned a trip. We landed in Belgium, wandered through Brussels and Bruges, took a train to Germany, visited friends near Dusseldorf, and ended up in Munich for Oktoberfest. Along the way, we somehow ran into friends and a few of my old colleagues from back in the States. Because, of course, the world is small when beer and pretzels are involved. After that, we made our way to Italy. Florence, Tuscany, Rome, the works. The trip was charmed. Everything that could go right, including parking spots opening up right in front of us, did go right. And then, after weeks of living like we've won the lottery, we landed back at JFK. When the customs officer asked if I had anything to declare, I just smiled and said, yeah, bankruptcy. It's good to be home, though. Back to the tools, the rivets, the rhythm of building November Tango. Because as much as we love exploring the world, there's something deeply satisfying about building our own airplane. In the last episode, we were elbow deep in tail parts that nobody ever sees. The unglamorous metal bits that make sure the rudder and elevator don't wander off during flight. This time, we moved on to something a little more satisfying, putting the skins on the empennage. Compared to skinning the wings, this felt like a day at the beach. We found our rhythm fast, reaming, clicoing, and riveting, and then repeating. And by lunchtime, the whole thing was buttoned up and looked like an actual part of an airplane instead of a science project. After lunch, we tackled the top box. Now the top box is where the wings and the fuselage meet. Basically the handshake that keeps the entire airplane together. It's a complicated bit of engineering, the kind that makes you appreciate engineers with pocket protectors. But we learned our lesson from the last go around. If you're not sure, you can Clico it, just don't rivet it. Clicos are temporary, regret is a lot longer. And we had a slight advantage this time. There's another high wing already a month or two ahead of ours in our sling build. Having that thing sitting there wide open was like having answers in the back of the textbook. No reinventing the wheel, no guessing, just good old fashioned look and copy. We pushed as far as we could, but eventually the clock and our brains told us it was time to call it a day. There's only so much problem solving you could bring out of aluminum before you start making simple mistakes. Next time, my son will be flying up to join me. He's a mechanical engineer, which is a fancy way of saying he's a whole lot smarter than his old man. And with him around, we might even get things right the first time. Well, that's it for this episode. More metal, less mistakes, more learning, and slowly but surely, more airplane. Stay tuned till next time.